Showcase TV is brought to you by Perfume Salvador Dali and Paris Mode. I'm crazy about Parfum Salvador Dali. Welcome to Showcase TV. On today's episode, somebody with 50 years in the entertainment industry, Grant Goldman, Leonardo DiCaprio's double from The Great Gatsby, Jared Doba. We've got Beck O'Brien, aka Darby, performing one of her new songs in the studio. But first, Gen I bloggers, models and sisters, it's Lydia and Tiari. Welcome to the show. Did I pronounce that right? Yes, perfect. I've Thank been you. practicing. Um, so bloggers, what made you choose to blog? Um, I just started blogging because it's just um, it's a way I can express myself on social media, just doing whatever I like. Um, it makes me take pride in everything I do and I like sharing that with the world. And oh, it just nice. gives you a personal brand and um, it's basically the new era of advertising, so it is. that's why it's, it works so it's well. It's pretty massive. Yeah. Yeah. Tiati, same? Yeah, same, for you. same for me, definitely. And how many followers do you guys have? Mm, 51,000. 11,000. 11, on, on Instagram? Yeah. And you've got a few on, on Tumblr. Tumblr? How many? Yeah. I think 10,000 on Tumblr. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Do you get sent stuff like products and what are the perks of being a, a good blogger? The thing with me is I don't really take anything that I'm not going to use or wear right. for the sake of just taking something for free. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you know? don't want to dress up in like boys' <laughs> leather outfit or something like that. Yeah, of just course to not. Get the word out there. Yeah, but so I think it's important when you do get something, you actually you take it because you're going to use it. One thing that went viral last year, uh, or early this year, was the Ellen DeGeneres selfie. Oh, yeah. Yes. That went huge. Can we replicate <laughs> of one? Of course. That's yes, of let's course. do it. Would you like to do yeah, it on we'll my have, own? You'll have to do it on yours because yeah. I've got about four followers. Okay. Uh, if we tried it on <laughs> mine, it. It, it wouldn't go anywhere. Let's do Oops. our own selfie on set. Wait, wait, it has to be a selfie. That's why Isn't I can't... Isn't that a selfie? No. If, if, oh. no. We've got to do it from the front camera. There's two different selfies, but... Oh, you can the do this. Yeah. Is that the same? Res oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's probably harder. How would I hit that? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ready? All right. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Awesome. That's going viral. Awesome. Stay tuned yeah. on that one. Hashtag <laughs> viral Replicate. showcase TV. Yeah, replicated it. Yes. Dot com smiley face ruffle lol. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, before we end this, can we get some, some tips for you girls? What would you say were yes. the most important things for anyone out there who are going to start a blog? Um, have a topic. Yeah, have a topic. I know I said it before I d didn't have a topic, but then I think my topic is pretty much myself and my lifestyle. Okay, so, yeah. cool. Number two, what would you say? Keep active. Keep active. Yeah. It's so important. Mm -hmm. I mean, um... And then what would the third one be? Um, tags and hashtags. hashtags yeah. it's tags so and important. hashtags. Really I like important. hashtags. I like, <laughs> with, yeah, bacon, egg, McMuffin, small orange is really? a hashtag. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I like yeah. those ones too. <laughs> yeah, what's a hashtag? So a hashtag <laughs> is pretty much a tag that, like, say if someone searches up a certain topic, yep. your page can appear, like, certain photos that you tag. Like, say, you can have a photo and maybe it's of a cat mm. or family. You it can will... hashtag family, cat, or, like, hashtag what you're wearing, how you're feeling. Okay, and what puts it all in, like, a, a, an area. So if someone yeah. clicked on hashtag cat, they could see everyone who's posted about a cat. Yeah, hey, I thought you said you didn't. You description. don't know what hashtags are. Yeah, well, I, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I'm learning. I'm, I'm learning. I'm going to have fast. once you post that photo, my following's going to go up to seven. Yeah, I can feel it. Girls, thank you so much for coming thank on the show well, and giving have... me an insight mainly to social media and blogging. No worries. I'm, I'm getting on board. I do about one a week. 
at the moment. Really? So I really need to up the game, don't I? Yeah. 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 It's still Sorry. good though. I'm letting the team down. Now my next guest had to wade through an extensive selection process just to be here. Uh, people say he looks a little bit like me, but uh, I don't quite see it. It's Jared Dubois. Nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, you've got quite an interesting story to tell in the entertainment <sighs> field. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna throw this one down the line to Leonardo DiCaprio's double on The Great Gatsby. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning, though. How did it start for you? Um, I guess I was walking home from the surf one day. Yep. Um, a, a lady pulled over in her car and said she was from a, a, a modelling agency as a scout and said, here's my card, give us a call up. So yeah, I gave them a call up and got some photos taken and they rejected me. What? So you got scouted and then rejected? This is true, this is Why'd true. Why'd you get rejected? Um, apparently I looked like a 12 year old girl. <laughs> it's a bit unfortunate. They should have just put you up for young female roles. Why didn't they do that? And you moved on from modelling and, and did a little bit of acting? You can hardly call it acting. Um, a mate of mine was like, oh, do you want to give um, movies a go, see what it's like to be in a big production movie? They said that Great Gatsby was coming to Sydney, and I was like, awesome, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, he said, just do some extra stuff, a couple of days. Yep. So I went along, did some extra stuff, um, and the extras coordinator came along and she said, look, we're considering you for Leonardo DiCaprio's double, um, and also for his stand-in position. What? Doesn't he have a um, permanent stand-in double? He has a permanent stand-in, but not a permanent double. So okay. I was actually the body double. So anything you see where you don't see the front of Leo, that's me. I'm wow. really attractive back of head. <laughs> um, no. how, how was it working with Leonardo DiCaprio? Because there's a couple of photos of you guys. Yeah, every day I had to work with Leo. So I'd come in in the mornings and we'd speak, um, chat about what was going on. Yeah. Um, I'd get given my lines because as a stand in, you have to do everything Leo would do in a set. They set up all the cameras according to those positions that you would deliver this line, uh, talk to that person, deliver this line. They'd set all the wide shots, long shots. Baz Luhrmann being the director, really picky on these things. So don't sit in a chair like this. No, no, Leo doesn't do that. Leo sits like this, one leg up there, fingers here, and he moves his hand around like this. Do it exactly like Leo does it, because if we want to close up on that hand, then you've got to do the same thing. Baz Luhrmann as well. Uh, crazy dude, he, he looks awesome. like a bit of a... Love that Woo! man. Yeah, yeah Baz Luhrmann's great. Um, so much energy. Well, moving on from the acting and the modelling, um, you've started a little business uh, with kids. I've worked with kids um, in soccer and swimming and stuff, and um, I work at an after-school care now. Okay. Um, well, I did. Now mm. I am starting to be a PA teacher. Just throughout those years at an after-school care, kids were going missing some days, so you'd have a roll call in the afternoon, um, you'd get the kids in and you'd tick off the names and you'd have little Johnny missing, Tim missing, right. Sarah missing, and you go, where are these kids? They're supposed to be here today. You find out 10 minutes later, one walks back in through, oh, I just walked home. I just walked home, sorry. Oh, no. or, or you get a call from someone down the road, oh, I've actually got Sarah here. She doesn't know if she's after school care. She's been walking home. I came up with an idea. It's just simple. These little, um, we call them ush bands. So um, ush is the acronym that stands for? Ush is the acronym that's out of school hours. Okay. Um, it's like a them, generic thing across Australia? Generic thing across Australia, yeah. out of school hours. Some have out of school hours care, so they'll be ushk, um, yeah. but everyone really knows what ush is. The parents at the morning um, when they're sending their child to after school care that afternoon, just slip that over their wrist so the child can wear that all throughout the day and it's a constant reminder that he's going to ush. I'm noticing some medical alert symbols over there. Can you, what, what, tell me about these ones. This is another product we have. It's called the Alert Band. It's for kids with asthma and anaphylaxis. Yep. And there was a recent article saying that um, 20 years ago, we had an asthma and anaphylaxis rate of two to 3% right. of our population. And now it's up to 10%. Wow. So it's more than tripled in 20 years. And they say that's just on the rise. This band just indicates um, that that child has an asthma problem or an anaphylaxis problem. Yep. Crazy, all right, that's cool. All right, so the alert bands for anyone with any kind of allergy, lets them know, that's cool. All the staff and other yep. teachers and other kids and whatever. Ush bands, simple reminder for kids going to after school care. Fantastic, where can we find these, Jared? Uh, online, we've got an online website um, called ushbands.com.au. Okay. 
um, you can go on there, you can make orders online and it's a really quick turnaround and they so, are so inexpensive for what they do and the safety that they provide for your yeah. centre. And I read somewhere that you donate money to charity as well? Yeah, um, we donate $25 to Variety, the children's charity, right. for every band package of 200 or more. Okay, fantastic. Ushbands.com.au, check out the range. Uh, it's, it's a great idea, of course, $25, as Jared said, goes to Variety, the kids' charity. Forefront of safety with kids, I love it. Jared, aka Leo, thanks for coming on the show. <laughs>to showcase tv joining me now someone who has had almost 50 years in the media industry it's grant goldman grant you're making Welcome. me sound like a very old person <laughs> <laughs> you did that Courtney very well Dober. Courtney <laughs> Dober. you're young good looking talented and you've got a tv show and i hate you <laughs> Seriously. Well, what thank is you very much. Place? I'll take that. This is not a TV studio. It's a prison. Look at the yeah. brickwork. Well, hey, hey, hey. You're being bricked in. You can't Ease get out. Yeah, I did the interior <laughs> design here. We didn't have much of a budget to work yeah. with, so just lay off, all right? Yeah, what is this? Free water or gin? That's it's water. whatever you yeah. want it to be. <laughs> Good. So 50 years, you must have had some fantastic gigs. Where did it, how did it start? Well, I won a Teenager of the Year quest at 2 TM when I was 13. And I saw, uh, I think it was Bob Lynch or one of those uh, old stars uh, at the swimming pool. And all the girls at the swimming pool were gathered around them at the, at the live broadcast. And I thought, I'm going to be a radio announcer just to pick up chicks. But, <laughs> uh, but it went on from there and I realised how, how good it was and how much fun it can be and how it's different every single day. Yeah. What other media was around? And did you just stick to radio? Or oh, no, because at uh, the radio station in Tamworth across the road was owned by uh, the same place. Uh, NEN Channel 9, and we did a show called Oak, Oak Junior Auction. So right. I got on there when I was 15, and, and the TV and radio career actually were parallel for quite some time. And I'm still in TV as voice, actually. Yeah, right. Was it a competitive industry back then? No, not at like, all. Really? Yeah. So anyone could say... Well, that's right. I mean, my father said, what are you going to work with those poofs for in radio? <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, Dad was a bit disappointed at first, and then he realised that it was more than just uh, just being a, a, a bit of a showpiece, you know, a yeah, show yeah. pony. Ah. It, it was more to radio than that. You were the uh, the voiceover on the shuttle buses to the 2000 Sydney Olympics. I was also... I the, heard your voice. Also the voice on the trains. On the trains, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, stand clear, doors closing. Well, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Really? And I was also the uh, uh, the main announcer for the 2000 Olympics as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, along with the French woman, who was gorgeous, by the way, um, doing the announcements at every entry to every uh, particular event. Can you remember any lines? Give them to me. <laughs> the best line was probably, ladies and gentlemen, gold for Australia, Kathy Freeman. Oh, yeah? No. Yeah, I'll never forget that. Yeah, right, yeah. Mm. Now, there is quite a big Goldman clan these days. How many kids do you have? So, I, I don't remember. I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them keep calling me. And, yeah. Well, it goes from Michael yep. right down to my five-year-old, wow. Alexandria, who was born at 24 weeks, so she's a modern-day miracle, that little uh, Alexandria. Light of my life and a lot in between. Yep. Yeah, and we've got uh, Jay, of course, who's in radio and television as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Lucas, who does the big screen all over the country. Lucas Goldman, Roshana, yeah. does the disco scene and voiceovers. She was my producer for a while. Melanie, she helped out at Brookvale Oval for a, a little while. And there's another son that found me in Perth. Right. <laughs> that uh, found me. Yeah, we. Uh, really? I, I don't mind telling you. This is a scoop for you. Oh, okay, um, <laughs> give it to me. Troy was uh, adopted out. Really? And he contacted me probably about 10 years ago, and we've been sort of getting along pretty well ever since. Michael and Jay are good friends with him. Wow. And so is Lucas, yeah. That kind of 
just did a really yeah, good shift mood good, shift. Isn't it, yeah, shifted good, did it? Really? I didn't know how to take that. Always surprise people. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was still smiling. I'm going, yeah. oh, yeah. chicken, this is a bit deep. I uh, had a book, which we uh, book. released many years ago, and I thought you might like it. It's called My Life is a Dickhead. <laughs> okay. Is that and, me? And this is what we do. I put your photograph on it. This is what I do with it. This is the this is the selling point. What you do is you find somebody, put their photograph on, and give it to them and sign it for them. There you are. Your life is a dickhead. <laughs> this is your life, Courtney Dover. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah and you well, know no, what? I, I, the yeah. book is actually self prophesizing, if you like, because I never sold one. You never sold one. Never sold one. So what do you do? Just them? give them away. <laughs> Can we play a little game? A little game, easy. Yeah, yeah, little game. This is uh, called Five Things You Don't Know About Grant Goldman. And I've got this little buzzer app that I usually use, but I'm going to hand the power over to you. Oh, okay. And if uh, if you know it's right or wrong, mm. red, obviously wrong, uh, green, yeah. correct. Go. Um, you hosted a TV show on the first colour TV in Australia. Correct. Your first word on radio, Mike told me, was the S word. There's a reason for that. Um, I, in, in my defence, yep. I whacked on I Wanna Hold Your Hand by the Beatles and I played it at 33, which was, I wanna hold your hand. In my panic, I opened the microphone and said, the first words on radio. So, <laughs> Classic. Um, you hosted the lotto with an ex-Playboy mate. Karen Penny. Not only that, Karen Penny and I were at breakfast time on 2SM for quite some time wow. as well when the program was... Dreadful. I hated the music was called Light and Easy. Yeah. Mm. Uh, is... I hated it. <laughs> if you weren't in the media, you would be a plumber. A plumber? I tell you what, there's, got, there's a lot gone wrong with my plumbing. I'm 64 years of age and at <laughs> half past five, you don't know what that means. No, Old people exactly. will know. <laughs> Goldman is sometimes half past five. Uh, classic. Okay, what would you have been? Well, well, I reckon a policeman. Really? Yeah. But you were an actor on the TV show number 96, which was like the home and away of the 70s, apparently. Yeah, uh, I, I was on number 96, I was also on The Box. Okay. As a reporter, you probably, yeah, okay, you don't yeah, remember no, that one. No, I was at minus 30 at that stage. I was in a movie called No Roses for Michael as a drug addict. Um, I've been in the Blackjack series movies Wow. Uh, with Colin Friels. Yeah. So I've done a fair bit of that stuff, yeah. Wow. Well, there you go, well that ends uh, five things you don't know about Grant Goldman, and now you do. Mm. So. Uh, Thank you so Thank you. much for coming on the show. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. And uh, for presenting me with my life as a dickhead, which there you is are. It's pretty obvious. Really, He's a pretty it? boy, isn't he? Yeah. Look at him, Thank, you? Thank you very much, yeah. you prick. <laughs>
Thanks for watching Showcase TV. Join me again next week. I've got Aisha Jeffcoat from The Mole, Kingston Court TV series creators Adam and Chris. I've got Jordan Finlayson from Beauty and the Geek and our musician Die Wolf. I'll see you then. Parfum Salvador Dali.
Showcase TV is brought to you by Perfume Salvador Dali and Paris Mode. I'm crazy about Parfum Salvador Dali.